Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and you know we usually talk long-term investing here on the channel, that buy and hold strategy for your financial future, but sometimes you just need fast cash. Sometimes you can't wait for your next dividend check or for that value stock to head higher. For those times, I've got five short-term investments you can make that will not only put cash in your pocket, but can be great ways to balance your long-term strategies. In this video, I'll reveal each of those short-term investing strategies, how to find them, and the risks involved. I'll also show you the key differences between short-term and long-term investing and how to profit from both. We're getting started, but you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now I want to get started on that list of short-term investments, so I'll show you those differences with other types of investing and the risks to watch later in the video. Our first short-term investing strategy is using technical analysis for swing trading in stocks. And I'm excited to cover this one because it's a strategy we haven't talked about much on the channel, but can be a great addition to your investing toolbox, whether it's for short-term or long-term investing. Technical analysis is just using a stock's own price history to forecast near-term moves in the share price and there are a lot of signals you can use, but I'll show you one example next. Now swing trading then is just using these short-term signals to take a position in a stock over days or weeks to profit from that forecasted change. So swing trading is gonna be much less intensive than that day trading strategy because you're giving the shares longer to meet that forecast. You're not worried about the smaller moves, but waiting for that bigger change predicted in your chart. And one of the easiest of these short-term trading signals is the 50-day simple moving average. Now this is just the stock price average over the last 50 days and most investing apps are going to show you this line on a chart. And what we see, we often see stocks bounce off this 50 day moving average, especially in an uptrending market. Maybe the shares will weaken a little bit but then bounce higher off that level of support. Now a great example of this is the Spider S&P 500 ETF, ticker SPY, which is just a fund following the broader market index. And you can see here in the chart that over the last five months, the share price has bounced off that 50-day moving average at least six times. Each time it fell to that support level, you could have bought the shares for a quick rebound, making 3 to 5% over the next couple of weeks. Not only is that technical analysis of the stock charts a great short-term strategy, but for long-term investors out there, it can be a great signal for when to buy into your long-term stocks as well. We haven't covered technical analysis much here on the channel, so I'm teaming up with Thomas Carbo to do a free webinar, three trading signals to use in your investing. Now that webinar is totally free, and as a bonus, besides those three technical analysis signals, we're also gonna show you how to use them to make money even if stocks fall, so look for that free sign up to the webinar below. One of the most popular short-term investing strategies here on the channel has been small cap and penny stock investing. Now there's actually no formal definition of what makes a penny stock, but it's usually around the size of the company, so the market cap of the stock. So any stock with a market cap under $1.5 billion is really considered a small cap, and a penny stock would be something smaller than that, generally less than 500 million. So it's really not just those stocks trading for pennies or even under a certain share price. That's the common misconception about penny stocks. But these stocks can be extremely volatile with those double digit price swings in any given day. And while I like to take that longer term investment in my penny stocks, they can make for great short term trades as well. And that's because these small companies, they're not widely followed by analysts or investors. That means with a little research on your part, you can find some great stocks selling at a discount. For example, I recommended shares of Surgeline, ticker SRGA, in our Stocks Under $1 video on August 16th. The company has a history of innovation and a new AI-based surgery platform that makes it a disruptor in its industry. Those shares are up 62% in less than the three weeks since the video, with the average analyst price target still another 183% from that current price. Again, I like to use a longer term approach to my penny stocks, but that's just from my background as a venture capital analyst. And my job was to look for these startup companies with that 10x potential for a three to five year investment. But short term investing in penny stocks means looking for those near term signals and the technical analysis as well as those long term fundamentals. Some of the other technical signals that you can use when picking stocks for a short-term bounce include the RSI indicator, which is just a momentum indicator that measures if a stock is overbought or oversold over a period, usually about 14 days. A stock with an RSI under 30 suggests it may be oversold and ready for a positive reversal. On balance volume is another popular momentum indicator for those short-term stock tradings, using the volume of the shares traded to forecast price movements. Now this is actually another of the signals that we'll talk about in that webinar, but basically you're looking for stocks with higher volume 
essentially money inflows from institutional investors where the stock price hasn't reflected that interest yet. Now understand though, there are a lot of scams out there in penny stocks, so knowing what to avoid is just as important as knowing how to find these stocks. Avoid any stock you hear about in an email or, or out of the blue from someone you don't know. These are usually pump and dump schemes where investors try to promote a stock they own so they can sell out at a profit. Always do your own research for these and have a fair value price at which you're gonna sell the stock to take profits. We've still got three more short-term investments to reveal, but it's important to know the difference here between that short-term strategies and long-term investing. Where the long-term investing we usually talk about is built around analyzing the value of the company, finding an intrinsic value of a stock and the ones that are gonna produce those returns over time. Short-term investing is based more on investor sentiment or a certain catalyst for the shares. Now, don't get me wrong, short-term investing involves just as much research and work as that long-term analysis. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions about stock trading. People think you can just flip on over to CNBC, get a few stock tips, and spend the rest of your life on some sandy beach. There are millions of investors out there, all looking for that same short-term profit. You've got to be better at finding that near-term catalyst that is going to move the stock price. Short-term investing is also much more of an either-or strategy. Either you're right about the direction of the stock over the next couple of weeks, or you are completely wrong. Those higher returns are nice when you're right, but being wrong can totally wipe out your investment. By comparison, long-term investing can produce returns even if you're not picking the very best stocks, but just by riding that natural upward direction in the stock market. Following these short-term strategies isn't for everyone, and there's nothing wrong with taking that slow and steady approach to long-term investing. It's the one I do most, but if you've got the risk tolerance, these quick investing ideas can make you a ridiculous amount of money. We've talked on the channel before about options investing, mostly as a way to limit your risk, but it can also be a great trading strategy for short-term profits. Options are a special type of investment that gives you the right to buy or sell a stock from now to a point in the future and for a set price. You pay a premium that's a fraction of the price of the shares, and then can use this option to buy or sell the stock no matter what the price does. And so the reason options work so well for short-term trading is because of that leverage. You can buy call options on a stock, the right to buy that stock at a certain price for a fraction of the stock price. For example, here are the September 17th options for shares of Ford Motor. Now these options expire in just two weeks and give me the right to buy, which are those call options on the left, or the right to sell, the put options on the right, for a set price. Here, look at the call options on the left for that strike price of $13.50 down the middle. Now that's the set price that I can buy the shares if I buy those options. Here it says I can lock in that price of $13.50 for shares of Ford through the next two weeks for a premium of just 24 cents a share. So if I was expecting news to come out or something that could send Ford back up to that peak of $16 a share over the next two weeks, I would buy these call options. If then the stock did go to that $16 per share over the period, those options would be worth at least $2.50 each, which is the stock price minus the guaranteed price on the option. That $2.50 would be a 10 times return in less than two weeks. Now, of course, with that potential to 10x your money, there's also the possibility of losing it all, and, and that's the risks in options investing. Rather than long-term investment in a stock, you have a short-term bet on the direction of the stock price. Since it's so time sensitive, using options for short-term investing is great when you have a specific date that you're watching or, or if you expect major news to come out for the stock within a limited time period. Whether it's approval of a new drug, clearing for a merger, or an earnings release, anything that's gonna move those shares in the defined period. Now let's look at one more example of short-term investing with options, and we'll use the options on Tesla here. Now shares of the electric vehicle maker have fallen in the week around earnings reports by an average of 3.5% in the last four quarters, and that's despite earnings beating expectations by 18% over each of those reports. Now, the company is expected to report earnings of $1.38 per share for the third quarter, due out around October 19th. That would be a solid increase of 81% over the previous year, but would be well off the 229% growth booked in the second quarter. So if I thought Tesla was gonna disappoint on those earnings again, maybe because of that chip shortage, then I could use what's called a put spread for the November 19th options. Now these options expire about a month after the earnings report. And you can see here, I can buy the put options that give me the right to sell the shares for $750 if I pay $70.70 each for those options. Now at the same time, I can sell the $730 put options to offset that cost by $60.15 per share. So in effect, 
my max upside is $20. So if the shares close below $730 each after the earnings report, and I'm only risking as little as $10 per share. So I'm risking $10 to make 20 per share. Now there are a lot of details about options investing you need to know, and I wanna to get to that next short-term investing strategy. I did a full video on options investing, including my five favorite strategies a few months ago. So I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. Look for that and it's gonna walk you through step-by-step -step to options trading. Leveraged ETFs are another great way to make short-term investment calls to produce higher returns. Now, most of you are familiar with those regular ETFs, those funds that hold shares of hundreds or thousands of stocks and then sell shares of that entire group to investors. It's a great low-cost way to get exposure to all the stocks in a theme or an index for just one investment. Leveraged ETFs, though, are a little different. These are set up to get two or three times the return on a sector or a theme. Instead of holding those shares of stocks in the group, the fund manager creates this higher return target through a combination of options and swaps. Basically, the manager takes leveraged bets on the stock or the index to get that 3x return. Let's take a look at some of the most actively traded leveraged ETFs and you'll get a sense for how these are used. For example, the top fund on the list, the ProShares Ultra Pro Short QQQ is designed to produce positive returns when tech stocks fall. The manager shorts options and swaps on stocks in the NASDAQ index to get that 3x leverage. So instead of investing with the sector, the fund is investing against it and benefiting from a fall in prices. Another example here, the Direxion Junior Gold Miners Bull is designed to produce three times the return on a group of junior gold miners. Here it's investing along with the group, benefiting when the share prices increase, but using the leverage for higher returns. So these funds are often used to take a short-term position in or against a group. Now, maybe you believe tech stocks are overbought right now, so you might invest in one of these bear funds to get that three times leverage if tech stocks fall. A lot of investors will also use these as hedges to their portfolio as well, so protecting them from that near-term weakness. For example, if you do have a lot of money in tech stocks but are a little bit worried about the next month, you can invest some of your money in this tech bear fund and then the profit on that investment is gonna help cover your short-term losses if your stocks in the portfolio do fall. And what you need to understand about these leveraged ETFs though is that they have some major drawbacks. That, that means you should only use them for this short-term investing strategy because the fund manager has to constantly be buying and selling those options to maintain that leveraged position these funds are extremely expensive to run and the expense ratio you pay to hold the fund is gonna be much higher than regular ETFs. Also though, because of that constant rebalancing that the fund manager has to do, these funds won't get that two or three X leverage return over the long term. They might be able to produce that objective return over a few weeks or, or even over a month, but the relationship kind of breaks down over time on those costs. Now, like most of these short-term investments, holding these funds can be risky though. You'll make two or three times return if you're right on the direction of the stocks in the fund. So for example, if you buy the Direxion Junior Gold Miners Fund and then gold prices spike, taking gold miners up 5%, you could be around something like 15% return on the leverage. But that leverage works the other way as well. If the stocks in the fund were to lose that 5%, then that leveraged fund would fall on the order of 15%. So you definitely wanna do your research on each of these. While I'm holding my cryptocurrencies for the long term, there are some short-term ways you can invest in cryptos as well. Now, there has been evidence found for seasonality and other momentum trends in Bitcoin prices. For example, in research by CoinMetrics over the last 10 years, returns in April, May, October, and November have been found to be better than the rest of the year. They also found a strong momentum effect with positive months of returns, often leading to at least one more month of positive returns. And what's caught my eye lately in that shorter term investment idea on Bitcoin though, is the difference in the unique addresses and the price of the token. Now we've seen in the past, the number of unique addresses on the blockchain is directly correlated with the price of Bitcoin. It's a theory called Metcalfe's Law, and we've used it in the past to make those longer-term price predictions. Lately, though, the relationship seems to have broken down a little, with the unique addresses on the blockchain down about 31% from that peak in April of this year. Over that time, though, the price of Bitcoin is only down about 22% from the high set that month. So I think from this, you could make that argument for price support on Bitcoin, even in the face of the lower activity on the blockchain. Maybe the idea that institutional investing and cash held in Bitcoin is supporting that price. So when we do get the blockchain activity increase back to its high, you could see prices of Bitcoin jump well past that $64,000 each. I've also studied daily prices on Bitcoin with data over the last 18 months and found the best times to buy are over the weekend, often late at night, Saturday or Sunday. 
on average, the price of Bitcoin was 1.4% less on Sunday compared to the weekly average and nearly 2.5% cheaper than the price on Friday. Click on the video to the right for those seven penny stocks under a dollar each. Seven penny stocks with one up over 62% in the last two weeks. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.